All right, so here we are in HDR, and I'm just gonna say this outright. The Sony X900E at the top, the LG C10 at the bottom, it's so ridiculous just how much more color the Sony has for faces than the C10. Now, I'm shooting this in SDR because after, again, looking at it with my own eyes and then looking at it on the phone here, I'm able to see that, again, it's coming through at least as far as a difference between what you can see pretty accurately from what I'm looking at with my own eyes right now to the camera. And right now, it is insane. Like, the, the amount of vibrancy and clarity that we have. The LG C10 looking way more dead by comparison. I mean, just look at that. You can't deny results like that. And, and that's the kind of stuff that's really going to start to plague movies the more you start to watch them. And here's another scene in Pacific Rim. We can see Mako, when she's younger, just looking really dead here. And then it's the total reverse. I mean, and this is HDR, by the way. I know we've got a lot of skeptical people in the community, so what I'll do is I'll get my remote out, and I'll show you the C10 is, in fact, in HDR mode. And I'm in HDR Cinema Home right now, and you're seeing it right there in real time, HDR Cinema Home, get my little trusty dusty cursor out here, and it is right there, HDR Cinema Home user. It's insane, the level of just not vibrant it is for it to be an HDR picture. And here's yet another example of Pacific Rim. I'm doing the best I can not to show off too much or to try to play too much, so I'll just let it play for a second here to let you get an idea. I mean, that red shoe coming in on the Sony at the top, destroying the OLED at the bottom and the color of the dirt and the environment is just freaking crazy, man. Now we're in the Spears and Munsell evaluation disc. And again, we're still in HDR. I'm going to show that off here again. I know as I try to switch to different content pieces, people are going to just freak out. So here we are, Cinema HDR, uh, Cinema Home HDR user. You can clearly see the Sony at the top in HDR just way better now i know i haven't shown off that we're actually in hdr so give me a second to grab my remote here as you can clearly see we are in hdr on the spears and munch soul uhd benchmarking disc we're just going to exit out and you can see it's exactly what i said it was it's nothing shady or anything like that so it's hdr it's true hdr and we're going into uh well i say true hdr but it's hdr just like I'm in HDR mode. Um, now, here's Cinema Home again, just showing you that as well. So nobody freaks out and says that this is like some sort of rig test or anything like that. And again, as we just keep going forward, you can kind of see like it's pretty telling. Like the HDR experience on the Sony at the top is way more colorful. Just like it's showing up on the phone, it's like way more colorful. Though the, the, the example that I can't wait to get to is the geyser example. But this mountain is like so clear and so sharp. And, and again, it, it speaks to what I've been saying about HDR for the longest time. Like it can look really, really solid on LED as well. And everybody's sleeping on the Sony X900E. Pretending like it's, you know, just this mid-range display when look at OLED. I mean, I actually tangibly see that blue tinge to the LG C10 with my naked eye as it's picking up on camera. So this, this camera is doing incredibly well for it not being in HDR mode, for capturing things exactly like I'm seeing them, which makes me wonder about the validity of HDR as a format, you know, but I'll digress from that point. It's looking exactly right now as I see it with my eye, and that's scary. Like the blue hue to the warm tones on the Sony X900E, the 900E bodying this display to a massive degree. This deer looks so much better on the 900E, it's not even funny. Now granted, that's when you sit dead center. If you start moving off axis, that's when things start getting a little sour for you. But still though, you can definitely appreciate all of this. I mean, look at the sky now. I mean, like this should not be happening, dudes. Like, look at, look at it. Like, it's so sad. Like one is clearly dead and void of any color. And this is what happens when LG goes up against something that is made for picture processing, made to look good. And I've been saying it for the longest time. Like if LG could fix their picture processing, I mean, we would really be having ourselves one heck of a fight here. But everybody keeps telling LG they don't have anything to work on and look at what that means for HDR. 
For the record, I hold Sony amongst one of the weakest HDR performances that I've seen. And after calibrating my Sony and after really working on the 900E, creating awesome settings that I've given out recently, I mean, it's a wrap. Like, it, you're seeing it. You're seeing it in real time. I, bro, it looks exactly like I'm looking at it right now on the phone. If this is the final video quality, this is what it's going to look like. And with my experience with using cell phone video, it usually looks exactly like it looks on the screen. And honestly, my dudes, this is pretty telling. Like, it's shocking. Like, I'm looking at it with my eye, and then I'm looking back here. Now, the thing that is not showing off as great is the level of luminosity the 900E is kicking out that the C10 is not kicking out anymore. I don't know if that's because this is a brighter scene and maybe the C10 is struggling a little bit more, but yeah, there's definitely a lot that's happening here that is like really super ultra mega exciting. And again, we could just see all of this stuff. Like, let's go to the Buffalo now. Dude, like this is all very telling stuff. Look, here we are with the Buffalo on the screen in real time, man, in real time. Like, look at that grass. You're not going to tell me that there's a slight difference between these two displays like a lot of the reviews out there are saying and claiming. Like, no, it's massive. When you actually try to dial in both displays like any consumer who respects themselves would do instead of just sitting with default settings, it's a big difference. Now, if all you do is take it out of the box and this is what you want, Maybe it might be closer and as close as they say it is, but nobody does that. Literally nobody I've ever calibrated for, ever known personally, just takes the TV out of the box and leaves it alone. Everyone at some point tinkers with the settings in their in their TV. It's it's fucking human nature, man. And 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 for this to be the narrative, like LED can't hold a candle to OLED and all this trash that we keep hearing, dude, like you're not even seeing the level of color coming in from the sunrise right now. The 900E is tone mapping flawlessly, dude. Like, I don't even know if I'm going to be able to show that off. I wonder if I can kill it. There it goes. Now you can see it a little bit better. I mean, like, oh, it's so hard. Let me try to crush it down a little bit so you can see it better. I mean, dude, that tone mapping does not freaking lie. Check that out. Look at this sunset here versus there. Like, way, way better on the Sony X900E. Now, granted... I am crushing out the black levels of the 900E. There's hella shadow detail, but I can't get both because it's cell phone video and it's not HDR. So that's the limitation here that we are facing shooting on a non-HDR format. I can't pull information from the shadows as freely as I could if I was in HDR, but I don't have the ability to do that on this particular device. So it is what it is. And given the limited space, I, I can't use some robust camera setup anyway. Um, but guys, let me tell you, these differences are blowing me away right now. They really are. We see the sun come over the horizon like this. I mean, it's so beautiful on both displays, really. But it's that 900E that keeps coming up. I mean, look, I'm gonna try to I'm gonna try to raise it up a little bit and try to get it dialed in as I see it on my end. And as I see it, it's about there. The LG is hitting hard, very hard on scenes like this, and I think that's where LG strength comes in. But again, it's that extra sauce with the processing on the 900E that just keeps it in the wind for me because it's doing so much better at rendering this kind of stuff. Like scene after scene after scene after scene, like I'm just blown away. Like I didn't do this test yet, like I still have yet to do this test. And, and seeing this test, this is very telling. Check this out, look at this, look at this. I'm gonna try to get it to where it is in real life. It's gonna be very difficult to do. This is about, about where it is in real life. Again, I can't derive more information from the shadows. Both have slightly more shadow detail than what you're seeing here. Um, I mean, maybe I can try to, I don't know, it's hard. It's hard because it's it's not HDR. I mean, that's probably, I don't know, we're just gonna have to settle for that, but you can see the color differences are disparagingly different. And when you watch these comparisons on these other channels, I've noticed the same thing. Like the, the differences are almost exactly like this. So I don't know why everybody keeps saying like, oh no, like LG is really like exactly like Sony. No, man, it, it's really not. And you're looking at an LED Sony from 2017. We already saw the 2017 KS8000 beat the pants off of the LG C10. Now we're watching it happen with the 2017 Sony X900E. Again, another TV I compared against the LG B7 back in 2016 or 17 or whatever it was. And everybody just jumped down my throat because I was pointing out differences like the rocks right now. 
The rocks right here are looking so much better than down here. It's dead, it's muted, and this is HDR, dude. Like, we haven't changed anything. And this is the kind of stuff that I'm talking about when I say, like, there's so many differences that everybody picks up on. Bro, my 900E right now lo looks worse by comparison as far as detail and color right now on this black scene because this is OLED strength, but they don't have any kind of haloing, clouding, or any of that nonsense. It's just clean. And this is the kind of stuff I'm talking about. Like, uniformity-wise, it's just clean. Obviously, the color is looking a little bit better on LG OLED because you can see all the various details. But honestly speaking, the 900E is not far off at all, at all. And it seems like this, it beats it with color, like, by a lot. Like, it's not even close because, I mean, really, this is kind of hard to show off. I'll try. Try to lower the exposure here so you can see it a bit more. I mean, look at that. I mean, the color is undeniable. And, and this is what I talk about when I say Sony processing is another level that nobody is willing to talk about right now for some strange reason. It's a strange, unbeknownst to me reason why people are hiding this fact from you. The undisputed fact that Sony is better. Like, bro, at least as far as color. Now, I had to open up the ISO a bit so the yellows are going to blow out. So I'm going to have to crush it down a little bit. And uh, I don't know how much of this is going to show off. It, yellow is a really hard color to capture on a phone, so I'm just going to have to go past this one. But it's it's dramatic. Like, it's, it's so hard to show you how rich it is without breaking out my DSLR, man. Now, on this, the LG C10 is actually looking more accurate and better to me. So it's clear that when it gets to some things, processing definitely knows what it's doing. The C10 is taking the cake all day, every day on this particular image, as far as the accuracy of color, where the Sony looks a little bit more artificial and overly red for no reason. It doesn't actually have that orange like I would like it to have, at least as far as this particular image goes. Now, as we get into the next image, though, then it becomes a win for Sony again. And, and the luminosity is gorgeous on that Sony display. Look at that. You cannot deny these differences. HDR to HDR, Sony takes the cake on the Sony X900e, and the LG trails behind. Now, granted, it still has depth on the LG C10, but the colors are a little bit more muted, and they're not as impressive as I really would hope for them to be, and that's just honest. Now, the fun part comes when we look at the color red. The color red is always so very exciting because I always talk about LG and their blood orange reds. Well, actually, in this particular scene, the Sony actually has more artificial type reds than what the LG C10 is displaying down here in HDR. This is a lot better than anything I've seen LG put out, and I think this is LG's strongest suit. HDR is clearly where LG puts a lot of their effort, and I wish they would take the same energy and hold it through into SDR as well, because that's where a majority of the content is going to be viewed. And what's really special about this image is that, you know, it's... It's HDR, but you have the reds and everything separated perfectly on the C10, and it's very clear and very beautiful. Where again, I, I mean, the, the Sony is definitely more vivid, but also it's lacking that accuracy behind the color red like you would have here. Now, to be fair, you're not using the same level of precision color mapping. Now, I, I'm going to try to open this up to make sure we're not crushing anything down, get it to about where my eyes see it, which is about there. And for this, I would say detail-wise, the C10 is coming out ahead again, looking very, very nice. And the the so Sony at the top's looking a little bit more orange. I don't know how to describe that. It was looking a little overly orange, not as orange as I would like it to look. And as we get to this, again, it's just a win for the C10. So I think because, again, once you talk about those darker scenes, that's where it comes into play and you see all the details, like even at the cityscape. However... They're looking very similar on this particular cityscape. And actually, the Sony has more color and even a little bit more detail because it's a brighter, darker scene, which if that makes sense. But I see a little bit more detail actually in the Sony because it's a brighter display and that helps for HDR. So I, I can totally see that. And I think that's crazy because I expected it to be the other way around. Same holds true for this image. This is a win for the 900E. You can tell because you can look at the things like the gradations at the top here, gradating in all the various colors where it just kind of falls flat on the C10. And again, just kind of getting that perspective, getting back a little farther, more vibrant colors back here on whatever that is. I mean, it, the bridge, I guess. It, it's just a different experience where LG is constantly like a little bit more muted than I would like them to be. And again, now as we're in this nightscape, 
the C10 is actually a little bit more lifted than the 900E, which I did not see coming. So I'll try to open that up so you can kind of see a little better and I'll lower it back down until it's where I see it in real life or as close to that as I can get. The C10 is a little bit more lifted. I don't know if you can see that. It's really hard to show that off, but they are actually a little bit more lifted. I didn't see that coming either. This is always so fun for me because I get to see how displays kind of stack up to one another, you know, and I get to see like the claims being made on the market. Are they true? Are they are they actually what they should be? Or are they just like hyping things up for no reason? And so I can see with the C10, there's definitely a beautiful HDR picture to be had here, but there's definitely a saturation problem. I know I've said that in like all my videos. This is way blown out. We gotta try to get that under control. And uh, we just slightly got it under control. There we go. And uh, yeah, I mean, if you look at these images, I mean, do I have to say more? I mean, the ground is dead on the C10. And that, that for me is the unforgivable part. That's where you kind of lose me a bit because it's like, it, it gets nice, but then it gets really bad when you get to things that are supposed to look natural, like deserts, like skin tonalities, like stuff like that really kill it for me. Like by a lot, sun rises over the horizon. There's a big story to the so-called HDR picture that you're just not getting on the LG C10, and it's a damn shame because I know they should be capable of doing better than this. But if you keep telling them they're perfect and they don't need to improve, this is going to be the story on like every comparison you do against a Sony. And this isn't even an OLED. This is an LED display from 2017. Granted, it's one of the best they've ever made and still a true champion, but still, man, it shouldn't be this case. It should be very different. Now... Again, I'm going to show you guys, I'm going to try to open this up a little bit more if I can and just show you the shadow detail that we're getting out of here. I'm trying to raise this up for LG's sake a little bit more. And again, even with doing that, the ISO is just showing the depth in the clouds more on Sony, the warmth in the grass. You can actually see the mountain behind the cows better with a lot more warmth and detail where it's just flat on LG. Like there's just... There's no comparison, man, and I can go on all day talking about it, but really it just boils down to the truth. And the truth is, when you compare these side by side, no nonsense and, and no biased nature to be given, it's very clear which one becomes the winner. And again, I'm going to try to get these where I see them with my real eye because it's overexposing a little bit here, and that's about what I see right there. So I really hope this comparison helped you guys. I hope you found something meaningful out of it. Um, I know a lot of people were asking about the HDR experience. Sadly, I can't show a whole lot of HDR movies off, HDR content off, because a lot of copyright stuff exists. Now, I was able to talk to Spears and Munsells a little while ago, a couple of months ago, and uh, get permission to use some of this footage. So hopefully I'm not going to get in any kind of trouble for using this. I'll shoot them an email just in case. But either way... I mean, this is what it is. It seems pretty cut and dry, clear cut and dry as to what is the case here. So I hope this helps you guys out. And I want to thank you guys so much for watching the number one brand in honesty. And until the next video, I'll see you guys later.